This video is sponsored by Cake Wallet, the easiest open source wallet to store Bitcoin, Monero, and Litecoin securely on mobile and desktop devices. When buying, selling, and exchanging crypto or trading for gift cards, Cake Wallet ensures privacy and security, giving you the keys to your coins. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to The Daily Zest. I'm your host, Randy Hipper, here today on a lovely Monday to talk about Bitcoin, crypto, the news, and everything you need to know going into this week. If you guys are ready for the zest and the education, make sure you smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and share the stream out with friends so more people can know what's going on in this beautiful world. Also, I want you guys to check out our two lovely sponsors, both Cake Wallet and Market Cipher. Links are in the live chat as well as the description. Make sure to use code MissingCrypto or code Zesty for 20% off for Market Cypher. Shout out to Ronell. Shout out to Johnny Bullets. Pew, pew, my friend. It's nice to see you. Where have you been, Johnny Bullets? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Guys, I want to make sure we get 150 likes, 150 live viewers. So make sure you guys are engaging. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got the sound. Why don't you like? Shout out to Piano Maddie B and uh, Frankie, but Piano Maddie B had some great shows over the weekend, as always. I was in the chat, I think Saturday night, um, as I was playing some shrapnel. Shout out to shrapnel. Um, but yeah, I want to say good morning to everybody in the chat. Before we get into everything, I do have my Fox Business interview. It was a tiff over the weekend to get a copy. I'm going to work on the, the link directly to Fox Business. Still working on the link, but I have a clip. So we're going to play it during the show as people are coming in. So I'm going to do a story first or two, then we'll get to the interview. So we know we have everyone here. Earthling, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. Jim Reed, good morning. Johnny Bullet said he's on the set of Daredevil. Ooh, how zesty. We got Crypto Farmer over here. Nice to see you, Crypto Farmer. We got Randy, uh, Bullduck, Eric, S Dog, Rez, Chump Chain. Shout out to Pocket Change as well. Oval, it's Smokey in here with Smokey Dan. Nismo, greater good. Nice to see you. Uh, we have Nash, Eben. Um, my girl, Alexandra G. Beautiful, beautiful person. Beautiful person, I know, I know. You guys know it too. We also have Nash, shout out to Nash, and my little Nashville friends. Uh, we have All Set in the chat. Nice to see you, All Set. Patrick Murphy, hello. Mike Volmer, XRP A11Y. Johnny December, nice to see you. He's from the Caribbean. Oof. Oof, oof. Listen, I need to, I need, I need the warmth. I need the warmth, right, Johnny Bullets. Uh, we have Joe Harvey. We have, do, do, do. Who else? I missed somebody over here. I know I did. Tom Allen, AB Black Hat. It's nice to see you. Andy S. We have Crypto Cajun, Nicholas Pitts. Nice to see you. Paul Kelly Music. Uh, who else? We have Lazarus. Good morning. Otto. Hi, Otto. We have Gary Littlemore. To the moon, he says, as always. We have Redman. Good morning, Redman. It's nice to see you, my friend. OG, what's up? Hello, Sawtooth Hiker. Uh, God help us. Good morning. Midwest is on YouTube. Let's go. We have Roland. Say hi to the babies. Give them a hug for me. Uh, who else? We have so many beautiful people in here. Sheesh. Chad, David Lee, Jesse is over there on X. Nice to see you. Wick and Wifey Wick. Good morning. Jacob Montgomery, Donato. Woohoo. Alvio. Shoosh. We have so many people. Severe volume. Um, who else? Oh, John Foster. Hi, John Foster. Can you please give your Twitter handle uh, or X handle, whatever you like to call it, to Emma um, or Randy or anyone? We need to get in touch with you, okay? Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Oh, You're Nick. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. $49.99 from Nick Cypher. Nick, this is your first ever super chat. No way. It... Shoosh. Oh. Thank you so much, Nick, for kicking us off today. What a kickoff. That's crazy. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Good morning to you. Hugs and love to you in your warm place of Arizona. Uh, got a full room. I know we do. We are packed today, Ron L. Uh, we, who else we have in the chat? Uh, Jesse, did I just get a shout out? Of course you do. And Jesse is a subscriber to the page on X, so make sure you guys do subscribe to me on X as well. No BS. Nice to see you. Crimson is in the chat. Yeah! I was playing some shrapnel with him over the weekend. Um, 
donate pencil necks. You're so funny, Nick. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. Let's get after Rid. Uh, Nino, nice to see you. Habibi from X. Hello, Habibi. David, nice to see you. All right. All right. We got beautiful people. Hoddle, no hugs for me. I have no. Oh, it's okay, Hoddle. Don't worry about it. You could air hugs, air hugs, virtual hugs. Don't worry. Financial failure. Good morning, Flavor. Hi from Virginia. Nice to see you, my friends. All right. All right. We have some beautiful people here. All right, let's get after it. Again, we have a goal of 150 likes, 100 live viewers, uh, 150 likes and 150 live viewers. Yes, that's correct. And we're going to get into it. Again, I do have a copy of my Fox Business interview. I'm going to post it later um, on X and all the social platforms. I just have a few things to upload first, and then we'll get after it. But here we go. First, I want to talk about the banks because obviously that's why we're in crypto is because these banks are failing in absolutely every way. And they don't care about if you're sick or anything like that. They'll continue to rob you. And we see a nice example where this woman had $1.9 million stolen from her account and she has an autoimmune disease and she was physically going into shock because of what happens with her bank. And this isn't the first time the bank has been in the media in the past month. So I really think you guys should take a look at this and give you some perspective. First, this poor woman, she was a, she accused a manager at one of the country's largest banks in India for siphoning off $1.9 million US from her account. Ms. Sharma says she transferred money from the ICICI bank from her U.S. account. She alleges the bank official created fake accounts, forged her signature, took out debit cards and checkbooks in her name to withdraw money from the account. He gave her fake statements. She said, created a fake email in my name and manipulated my mobile number in the bank record so I wouldn't get any withdrawal notifications. Spokesman for the bank said that Indeed, the fraud had happened, but the bank is a rep of repute which holds trillions of rupees in deposits from millions of customers. He said whoever is involved will be punished. She obviously was investing in U.S. and Hong Kong with her money, decided to put it in this Indian bank for some returns. Again, the greediness. Over a period of years, from September 2019 to December of 2023, we deposited our entire life savings of around 135 million rupees in the bank, adding that with interest, the sum would have grown to more than 160 million. She said the bank branch manager would give her proper receipts and send her email statements but with false information, she said that all of her fixed deposits had vanished and there was an overdraft of 25 million rupees taken from one of the deposits. She said she suffers from an autoimmune disease and she was traumatized and couldn't get out of bed for an entire week. They assured, the, the bank assured them that they will get all their money back, but first they needed to identify all the charges. They were 100% sure. And the bank said it was actually shocking to discover how the money had been siphoned from the account. Um, the bank even said over here on the bottom here, do, 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 that the bank acted swiftly and took action against the manager who was involved with this and none of the customers had lost any money. And that in Ms. Sharma's case, he said it was bewildering that she remains unaware of the transactions and balances in her account over the past three years, only to recently notice a discrepancy. So bank branch managers are on a tear right now. And they're mostly targeting people that really can't do anything about it and this guy, went through a lot just to steal millions of dollars from this woman that he took emails, created emails in her name, manipulated the mobile number, and was sending her fake receipts and insurance papers, I guess, to show, okay, here's your deposits, here's everything going on, and completely lied to this woman. So she thought she had over a million dollars in her account, but she was actually negative 25 million rupees. This isn't the only story like this that I have to share this morning because there was a bank manager that was charged and sentenced from stealing money from elderly customers. So we see that a lot of people that aren't capable of defending themselves are being taken advantage of in the banking system. This woman we just talked about having an autoimmune disease. She was just straight up robbed by this bank manager. Another bank manager from Washington, from Clark County specifically, is now sentenced from taking advantage of old people. Take a look at this. 
A Clark County man who targeted people who were elderly and disabled was sentenced to three years in federal prison for dealing with their bank accounts. He pled guilty to bank fraud and identity theft. Apparently, he stole $1.3 million from his customers. Brian Davey, 44, age, which again, like, why are you doing this at 40 years old? Like, why do you want to spend your life in prison? He was a manager at Wells Fargo in Battleground. The U.S. attorney said he specifically targeted customers who were elderly, disabled, and spoke different languages over a five-year period using unauthorized cash withdrawals, money transfers, and cashier checks. American so Association of Retired Persons Specialists said this crime often goes unnoticed. Said, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed from AARP Fraud Watch Network specialists. Don't feel guilty. How could I fall for that? Talk to a friend, that trusted loved one, and share with them. Like, this is so ridiculous. This video is sponsored by Cake. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That was the wrong button. That is so ridiculous. How do you do that to somebody? You're knowingly for five years stealing from people that are old and disabled and over a million dollars. How did this go unnoticed? It's because he was a part of the system. He was a bank branch manager. Obviously, these people know they have some sort of power, but then it ends up backfiring on them anyway just because they know that they're not too powerful. Like if they own the bank, like someone like Jamie Dimon, then you could pretty much do whatever you want. But because he was just a manager at a Wells Fargo and Battlegrounds, Washington, he got caught. And obviously this is something that goes unnoticed. Like they say here all the time, according to AARP, because they don't help people. They don't care about you. And it's absolutely horrible. This is why you cannot let people manipulate and take action with your account. Bank of America does the same thing, opening fake accounts in your name. This isn't something that's new. It's not something unusual. It's just something that's not reported and not really talked about, which is really horrible, considering the fact that this is why we should talk about the banking system more. We're in crypto because we need to make sure we are our own bank, that we don't have to worry about people like this manipulating us and taking our money and sometimes not even getting it back. Or even in this case, Julius Baer, they suffered an IT crash last week, another bank. We see here that it prevented people from accessing their systems. This was on February 16th, but they only wrote this a few days ago. They say they quickly restored services, though. Not only are these banks failing in terms of their staffing and taking advantage of you, but you also have banks like Julius Bayer that completely had an IT system outage and people could not do anything or access their accounts. This isn't the only bank that has gotten hacked recently either because we even had banks that were releasing your social security number, your biometric data, and all of the above. So it's not only just People, you have to worry about manipulating your money within the banking system, but you also, you. You also have to worry Thank about you. the infrastructure. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. 670 Taiwan dollars from Covent Boy, LFG. Wow. Thank you so much. Covent the Boy, thank you so much. Pamp it up to you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. But yeah, the infrastructure is... So just so you know. I just need to let you know about the banks and whatnot. Just going to let you know about the banking system. Again, make sure you guys smash the like. Share this out with friends. I want to get 100 likes. Let's get 100 likes so we could go to that 125 and 150. Because we have MicroStrategy. Michael Saylor, who acquired another 3,000 Bitcoin this morning. But hold on. MicroStrategy was also hacked? Take a look at this. Firstly, we have MicroStrategy this morning acquiring another 3,000 Bitcoin for around 155 million. And they now hold, or hodl as they say, 193,000 Bitcoin acquired for around $6 billion, like an average price of 31.5K per Bitcoins. And Michael Saylor says it over and over that he will keep buying the top forever. Seems that maybe some people got a little messed up because of MicroStrategy's X account was hacked and it led to around $440,000 of crypto being stolen. And this is something that's so common and they're targeting a bunch of crypto accounts and it's very unfortunate. But here we go. 
MicroStrategy's X account was compromised. This was the tweet that we've been seeing. And this is a very similar tweet to what we've been seeing on a lot of other X accounts that have been getting hacked. Um, and so I would just tell you that there will be no airdrop. It wouldn't be anything crazy. Um, and they're going to, like, even when they compromised my X account, what did they do? They put up a giveaway or they're going to just put out a new token. Like, obviously, that's not going to happen. And people fall for this way too easily and connect their wallet. You should never connect your wallet until you're a thousand percent sure of something. Um, so it's just very unfortunate. And I wonder if MicroStrategy had any 2FA on their account. And they are a tech company. So I'm very interested to see what happened there. In my case, 2FA was bypassed. And that was messed up. Um, but it seems like that's the case for a lot of people as well. All right. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. I had such a great time over the weekends on Friday. Friday was an amazing day. Why, my friends? Why? It's because I went on Fox freaking business for the fifth time. <laughs> and it was so amazing. Shout out to Charles Payne. What a guy. We were a little silly goofy together. He's so amazing. Shout out to him. Personality on point. Just a good person. Very on point. And uh, we had some other teens on the show as well together. It was very fun. So we're going to go check out that interview now. So if you guys are ready for the interview, make sure, again, you smash the like, subscribe, share it out with friends so more people can see it. And also make sure you guys put a yes emoji or one if you want to see the interview. Or put a two and a no if you don't. Let me know if you want to see it. Should I show it? Should I show it? Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, no, no. Yes, no, yeah. Woo. <laughs> uh, this is so funny. But let's get after it. Uh, let's, uh, let's put up this video. I see a bunch of yeses in the chat. Oh, yay. Okay, and I'm also going to post it later. So when you guys see me post it later, make sure you guys like and share it as well so more people know what's going on there. All right. Um, all right, so it was over here, and then how did I do this? Okay, beep. And that is beep. beginning to happen. Take a look at this. This is Spike on accounts ages okay. 13 on. and 19 Hold. at Charles Hold. Schwab last year. Now, our next guests are part of that group. Uh, some teens are now. Oh, I can't hear it. That's the problem. Poop. How do I display this so you guys can, so I can hear it too? Oh, this sucks. Hold on. I got to figure this out really quick because it's not letting me hear it. I'm going to figure it out. Wait a, a darn moment. Wait a freaking darn moment. I got it. Let's do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got it. Woohoo. Let's see. And that is beginning to happen. Take a look. Sorry, friends. Hold on. I got it. Yay. OK. I don't know why this happened. But it's okay. I got it now. Now we can all hear it. And that is beginning to happen. Take a look at this. This is Spike on accounts ages 13 and 19 at Charles Schwab last year. Now our next guests are part of that group. Uh, some teens are now in the stock market. Joining me now, Ms. Why won't it show you? Oh, there you go. And that is beginning to happen. Take a look at this. This is Spike on accounts ages 13 and 19 at Charles Schwab last year. Now, our next guests are part of that group. Uh, some teens are now in the stock market. Joining me now, Ms. Teen Crypto, Randy Hipper is with us. High schoolers, Mohan and Co. Morality. I'm close, I'm close. So you'll strike <laughs> me out. And Rachel Kim, I think I got that one right. All right, let me start in studio. Mohan, let me start with you. How old are you? I'm 16. 16. When did you get in the market? When did you start trading? Around 13. All right, so what was the impetus? What made you say, golly, I want to do this? Well, you know, before the pandemic happened, I didn't really know a lot about investing, but, you know, the economy was shifting and a lot of people saw it as a bad thing, but it also brought a lot of attention. So especially at home, you know, my dad would talk a lot about the market and that just intrigued me because I realized the prices are down or the stock prices are down now. And, you know, they're probably going to go back up in the future. What intrigues me is the, the names that you bought. So you didn't buy meme stocks per se. Yeah. You bought Disney, you bought Amazon, you bought Starbucks. 
Uh, and you bought Chegg, Chegg, which I think is a little different, more of a high-risk play, but could be high-reward. What made you gravitate to those bluer chip names? Yeah, so, you know, as the pandemic happened, the economy was shifting and consumer preferences were shifting as well. So I really looked at stocks that were, you know, becoming more present digitally. So Disney with Disney Plus and Amazon with its e-commerce. And those two stocks just really attracted me. Richard, uh, I want to start with you. Uh, Richard, I want to ask you the same questions. Uh, what, uh, what, what, how old were you when you started to buy and what did you buy? Hello? I'm going to let them fix Richard up while I bring in our, our, our Miss Teen Crypto. So, Rachel, I'm sorry. Uh, Rachel, I'm sorry. Uh, Rachel Kim, what, how old were you when you started and what did you buy? Oh, I was 15 when I started and I put in a couple hundred dollars into AMC during the game stock there. Are you still holding it? No, not today. All right, so I sold it for I'm sorry, 300%. You, you made how much? I Sorry? You, you made money on it? Yeah, I tripled it All within right. a couple of weeks. Rachel, that's what I want you to do. I want you to look straight into the camera and say, Stuart Varney, I made 300% on AMC. <laughs> Stuart Varney, 300% on AMC. All right. What are you buying now? Right now, I completely shifted my mentality since I realized that 80 to 90% of professional asset managers and investors underperform the market long term. So right now, I'm mostly invested into index funds and ETFs like Spy or Keep. Oh, Rachel, don't be, I mean, you're too, too young to get that, you know, don't, I want you to be a swashbuckler. You don't have to go for AMC, but you can be a swashbuckler. We've got an original swashbuckler in studio with us, right? Miss Teen Crypto is no longer a teen. Congratulations. You officially entered adulthood, 21 years old. So we've got two investors, uh, young investors, teenagers like you, uh, both starting out very smart, right? Uh, Mo Mohan, he's got blue chip names. He's taking a shot with Chegg, which I think could pay off. Uh, and, of course, Rachel, who made a lot of money but uh, instantly said, hey, listen, I want to be a little bit more conservative. What would you tell him because of your own experience of the ups and downs that you've had, but particularly with the crypto investments? I would tell them that risk is worth taking. We're at a point now where the American dream has changed, where people used to come to this country, think they could work a job and own a house and they would live a prosperous life. When Charles, we're now realizing that as Gen Z, the hopes of owning a house are diminishing, that you don't have to be an economist or a major analyst to know that. Wages are staying the same and even lessening, but prices keep going up. Risk is worth taking. Take a shot. Start investing. Well, with that, right? Okay, risk is, risk is worth taking. You're young. Are you going to, you know, are you going to look for the, the sort of moonshots? Are you interested in that or just sort of you're okay with slow and steady wins the race? Yeah, I'd say like um, since I started over three years ago, I really built up a lot of knowledge. And with that knowledge now, I think I'm more capable of taking risks. And that's something I'll definitely look forward to. Rachel, uh, you're, you're taking a more conservative approach. What's the, what are the, the, besides the ETFs, are you looking at any individual stocks at all? Uh, no, I'm honestly mostly diversified. I'm sorry, uh, we're having some 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 issues. All right, so before I let you go, uh, what's next with you? Your podcast has been on fire. Yes, my podcast just hit 300 episodes. I'm going to continue the Randy Hipper podcast as well as the Daily Zest podcast. That's live 9:45 a.m. Eastern Monday through Friday on YouTube. And I'm just going to keep going, spreading Bitcoin and crypto adoption as this is the leading digital revolution for the next generation and beyond. Well, huh, you got any crypto? No, no, no. Talk. He will soon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. After you spend any time in the green with her, you will have some soon. I got his uh, back. Congratulations, uh, Rachel Mahant, and of course, Randy. You are absolutely killing. And of course, uh, when it comes to doing this for a long time, Liz Clemens started young as well, and she's proof positive <laughs> it is an endeavor worth embracing. Right, Liz? And that is. The so that was freaking fire. That was so freaking awesome, dude. That was so freaking awesome. Hold on. Let me go back here. Make sure I turn that off. Share screen. Back. Okay. Beautiful. All right. There we go. I just had to put everything back. Had to rearrange a little bit. Had to rearrange. But what did you guys think? What did you guys think? I got to check the chat. I didn't look at the chat yet. Uh, yeah, Nick, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you um, and face all the links once I post it. But I'm happy you were able to see it here. Um, but yeah, that, that was so fun. That was so fun. Like, Charles is such a good dude for letting me plug the podcast, too. Because uh, I told him before we went live, he was asking me, like, you know, how do you feel about your show? I was like, freaking fire, dude. Um, 
but this was so freaking awesome. Um, so shout out to Charles again, having me on since I was 18. What a little goofball. Um, I, I just appreciate him so freaking much. Every time I see him, it's like a freaking reunion. Uh, the staff at Fox is really awesome too. So shout out to everybody at Fox Business as well. Uh, they're all freaking dope people. Uh, Universe, hello. Um, oh, thank you so much, same to you. All right, let's get it guys. Silly Charles, yes, uh, he's freaking awesome. So yeah. I, I appreciate it. Uh, happy to see you live. Me too, Nemesis. It's nice to see you. Uh, but yeah, you guys are great. Thank you for all the beautiful comments in the chat. Uh, the kid got no crypto. No, he doesn't. But I'm going <laughs> to gonna make sure he gets some. Uh, he was a nice kid too. So shout out to him. Shout out to everyone that was on Fox with me. Just a great time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to post that later. So make sure you guys watch out on like every single platform uh, that you could. And this is what we're all here to do. We're here to get after it. We're here to make sure we could spread a dot and uh, going on mainstream media like Fox Business is one of the ways that I get to do that. So I'm very fortunate for the opportunity as always. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, that was so freaking awesome. I love that place. I love it. Every time I go on, I'm like, oh, fam. All right. Uh, Ronnell, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to continue into the news because we just played the Fox Business interview. Again, if you guys missed it, you guys could rewind or I will be posting it again later so you guys could rewatch it all that you want and share it out with your mom, your girlfriend, and your side chicks. So <laughs> let's continue to talk about the news. And I see someone in this, is in the chat. That is hmm, Gary Gensler. So we have some Gary Gensler news and beyond because... Apparently, South Korea and Gary Gensler are all buddy-buddy. And Gary Gensler is going to South Korea to discuss NFTs and crypto ETFs. Very random, considering that NFTs is something that he has given no clarity on in the United States. And he hasn't even told us what a digital asset is. So there's a lot of failure on Gary Gensler's part. So I'm interested to see how he would advise another country on how to do something that he's not even doing. So... The head of South Korea's financial watchdog is set to meet Gary Gensler in May of this year to discuss classifying NFTs in approving spot Bitcoin ETFs, according to the local media. South Korea currently doesn't classify NFTs as virtual assets as the government viewed its influence on the financial markets as minimal compared to that of cryptocurrencies. Governor Lee Bok hyun of the Financial Supervisory Service is reportedly planning to discuss with Gary Gensler whether NFTs should be legally classified as a virtual virtual asset as speculative behavior surrounding NFTs has risen along with the value of major cryptocurrencies. Now, they also are set to discuss the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs. Country restricts the institutions from launching ETFs and barred companies from brokering overseas spot Bitcoin ETFs as well. I just don't understand like why South Korea is discussing things with Gary Gensler when again he has not classified NFTs as anything in this country. He has not even identified where a virtual asset is. He's only released one uh he's only released a Bitcoin ETF, not ETH yet. So it's just he's giving advice on things he hasn't done himself, which I think is almost hypocritical in one way or another to do. But nothing surprises me. Why? Because it's all theater. It's all an actor. It's Gary Gensler is a paid actor. All these other people are paid actors. Now, if you look at NFTs, of course, this is something that they want to regulate. But are they going to regulate people selling Pokemon cards? Are they going to regulate people selling, I don't know, an old photo? of somebody or an, or an autograph. If someone autographs, like, let's say Charles Payne autographed my little Poland Spring water bottle, obviously people might feel like this has value. And let's say we trade it. You give me money, I give you the signed water bottle. Is that going to be a security under Gary Gensler's ruling and in South Korea? Hucksters, fraudsters, scam artists. Ponzi schemes. So that's just something I thought that, that was very entertaining was the Gary Gensler giving other people advice on stuff that he won't even do himself. Just just irony. We think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, Gary, Gary, Gary. Look a little huckster, fraudster, scam artist, Ponzi schemer. Speaking of Gary Gensler, Liz Warren, Janet Yellen, all of them crack down on Binance. Now, Binance is accepting its fate for apparently their horrible past actions, which again, we have no receipts for. They said that there was terrorist financing and illicit financing going through Binance, or as Janet Yellen likes to call it, Binance. However, 
there were no receipts, no people listed as to who was using this platform because there is KYC involved, no blockchain transfers being shown to anybody about how much money was being moved around with Binance. If anything, Binance was always compliant. Was this, again, a move to just push out CZ, who was somebody who talked to more leaders than our own government? He was on planes over 500 hours. He barely even sat down, this man. And it seems as though he even had to possibly give up his passports before his sentencing. Talking more about Binance itself, last year they agreed to pay a $4.3 billion fine, which again, once the fine is paid, who does it go to? Who really pockets the money? And does it really do any benefit for the public at that point? Not really. However, Binance is accepting its responsibility. A potato. F as it has in the, a plea deal being approved by the judge. So... Quote, Binance accepts responsibility for the company's past actions as has already made significant process in taking the steps required under this terms of plea agreement. Binance has agreed to pay the $4.3 billion penalty. A spokesperson said the company has made considerable compliance enhancements and they're looking forward to the coming months to continuing to build on their efforts to see the industry standard for compliance, security, and transparency. They're pleased to announce this matter is going to be put behind them and they're going to continue their path of being the most trusted and secure digital asset exchange in the world poor cz bro he's getting absolutely wrecked they said uh with binance as well they're gratified by the recognition we have received from regulators regarding our cooperation and significantly enhanced compliance they look forward to the coming months again to build their efforts for the industry standards I don't know. It's just very suspect. Again, we don't have any real answers. What really happened with CZ? What really happened with Binance? They don't leave them alone. And as far as I'm concerned, we really don't know the new Binance CEO. I'm very interested to see how he feels about CZ and what kind of relationship they had previous that all of a sudden it seems that they're leaving CZ behind as, as if they, he never existed. Uh, poor, poor Binance. I guess for the business, they have to keep going. It just seems like CZ was just done dirty as usual. He was a big player that was doing a lot of big things for the space that has gotten taken out. He's spreading global adoption, which is something that our government particularly doesn't want because they're old people that want their dollar to remain dominant when it's just diminishing in purchasing power every single day. Um, on top of the corruption that occurs with the dollar, and the dollar is the primary vehicle for illicit financing anyway. But let's just ignore that. Let's just ignore that. Bitcoin is pumping a little bit. We're at 452.2, almost 52.3. Uh, this is passing the 51.8 resistance, so we're going to keep watch on this. We're going to see if maybe we could hit 53K again um, on stream if, if it so goes there. Because, again, look at this consolidation. Look at the consolidation. We're going to keep moving, though. We're going to keep an eye on the chartery. We got the ticker right here. We got the chartery. There was a big win over the weekend, which... I'm bullish on, bro. I am bullish on. We have Texas Blockchain Council and Riot, which they got scrutinized by the OMB and a bunch of other people, the uh, Energy Information Administration, the EIA, because they were apparently sent along with, eighty, I believe, 82 other cryptocurrency or Bitcoin mining firms that they had to fill out this survey. And they would be taken advantage of with their energy usage and just complete obstruction of justice. People like Tom Emmer said that this was just something that they didn't really have the power to do. And it was an abuse of power to do that. Because if they didn't fill out this survey, which, again, they would get cracked down on severely, then they would get charged a fee or a fine of $10,000 a day. For what reason? Why do we have to give up this information? It doesn't make sense. There... There was a judge that sided with Texas Blockchain Council and a riot against the U.S. energy officials, which they're supposed to be a politically neutral group, the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, yet they are not, and they're cracking down like they want to do with everything in crypto, according to this administration, at least. 
TBC, the Texas Blockchain Council, and Bitcoin mining firm Riot have won a favorable ruling from the U.S. District Judge in a lawsuit against several U.S. energy officials. On the 22nd, there was a report that TBC and Riot alleged the U.S. Department of Energy, the EIA, OMB, and their respective leadership sought invasive data collection from crypto miners. According to a 23rd filing, again, February 23rd, three days ago, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas, the TBC and Riot, confirmed or inconvenient the judge that irreversible harm would happen without a temporary restraining order TRO against further data collection. As a result, the court enforced a TRO that prohibits them or the EIA, the OMB, all these crazy freaking people from requiring crypto miners to respond to the survey as well as prohibiting the EIA from sharing any data that has already been received from the survey. Quote, the court finds that the plaintiffs have shown through a verified complaint and supporting evidence that immediate and irreparable injury, loss, or damage would result if a TRO is not issued. They argue that the potential damages include non-recoverable costs of compliance with the survey, credible threat of persecution or prosecution if they don't comply, and the disclosure of proprietary information requested. And on top of that, there was no compensation. So that's what it all comes down to too, is the money, the chinga chinga, the ching ching. But it's true, they do get persecuted. If they don't give the right answer, if the government doesn't like what they say, what are they gonna tell them? They have to shut down their operations? That's where this is all going because obviously our own government doesn't care about boosting the economy. They don't care about their own opinions by the Pentagon that says in the future, Bitcoin hash rate, the amount of power that you have to power the blockchain and mine and approve transactions or whatever it may be, that will be what countries define as strength, is the amount of power and mining power you have with Bitcoin. That's already confirmed by our own Pentagon. So the fact that there are government agencies, a bunch of three-letter agencies, they're cracking down on people in crypto, it just doesn't make sense, other than their energy narrative and all these things that they keep trying to push that really don't make sense. Regulation by enforcement, it just doesn't work. And obviously, in the court system, we're getting some sort of relief between a bunch of cases, including this one, where it seems that the judges are making the rules and regulations in this country versus our actual regulators that are trying to do everything in their power to push crypto back. It's all a part of the theater. This is another round of FUD. But I'm just happy that these companies, like Riot and in collaboration with TBC, were able to kind of take down and have the money to fight them in court over it. That's the only bright side I see here. The bright side. Da da da. Da 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 da. da. There was also another exchange that I really want to warn you guys about. Um, I really need to remind you guys about because it's very important. That BitForex, if you guys know about this exchange, it went dark. They're not responding to users anymore. And there was a $57 million outflow from the exchange. And their CEO happened to step down just recently last month. If you take a look at this. Crypto exchange BitForex has gone offline after $57 million was reportedly withdrawn from the exchange's hot wallets on February 23rd. Zach XBT said the withdrawals have stopped processing and the BitForex team is unresponsive. When trying to access the website, users are met with a page that says, sorry, you have been blocked. BitForex owns 18% of the total supply of Teller TRB worth $54 million. Remains unclear on whether the hacker infiltrated BitForex's hot wallet or the team has voluntarily halted the withdrawals. The X account has not posted since February 21st. That was five days ago. To me, it seems that the team is a little bit suspect and it's a little unfortunate that we have seen a lot of people still relying on exchanges and not taking self-custody. I don't care if you think the exchange is safe. I don't care what you think about anything with these exchanges. If you are not trading, if you are not actively buying and selling on the daily, if you were hodling, if you are holding for a long period of time, take your crypto off of the exchange. I am done hearing people get robbed from the exchanges. People are getting robbed with the bank accounts with these bank managers. Stop the madness. Stop relying on other people. Thank Please you. be your You're own welcome. bank. I'm Thank begging you. You're welcome. freaking Thank begging you. You're welcome. $10 from three diglets. Oh, Bitcoin diggy. is effing dead. Stop the show. Put a fork into the Bitcoin. 
That's not the attitude we want to have, three diggies. But thank you for the super chat. <laughs> You're crazy, dude. Dickie's funny. He makes me laugh. I appreciate you. Thank you. But again, stop with the madness. Not your keys, not your crypto. Put your crypto in the wallet. Store your recovery phrases offline. People are horrible. People are horrible. Obviously, another example, stop relying on other people. Stop the madness. So we're going to talk about something else that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Speaking of things that are not working properly, we have Avalanche that was down for five hours uh, last week. And this was pretty wild. This was three days ago. It was a five-hour outage. They were not producing blocks. Uh, they said there was probably a mempool management bug, which is a purely code-related bug and not an issue with performance handling. However, we saw Avalanche had a big outage last week before this because they were going to have uh, their little withdrawal halted where you were allowed to put money from ETH mainnet to Avalanche, but you weren't allowed to take money from Avalanche onto ETH mainnet, which again is very suspect. And why would they ever be allowed to stop and halt transactions on Avalanche? They were down for the, at least the second time. I am very skeptical of blockchains that go down. On Avalanche, there's amazing projects on Avalanche. Amazing projects. Same thing for Solana, amazing projects. But as far as I'm concerned, if you do not have a blockchain that is not reliable, then how can you really put assets on it and feel like you're safe with it. Now again, it's unfortunate that there are so many good people that are building on these things. This just proves that we're so early. We even saw last bull run where, where one blockchain didn't succeed, another one would, and projects would start blockchain hopping. Don't think that blockchain hopping won't start again. Listen to me now. So when it happens, you are not confuzzled because there are a bunch of people that are investing in Solana for the sake of the projects. Same thing for Avalanche. There's such great projects. Let me buy Avalanche. But what if the biggest projects on that platform or on that blockchain decide to hop on over to another blockchain? That happened so much last bull run, it was unbelievable. And it will happen again because you cannot rely on all these blockchains that just stop and have the ability to be halted with transactions as well. The amount of centralization here makes me a, a little bit worried, makes my tummy go a little bubbly. I'm not going to lie to you. The reason why we're in crypto is to have blockchains that have no downtime, to have blockchains that are secure, that have blockchains where we know that is proof of work, completely decentralized, that there's not a team or a group of devs that have to fix it. That's why we love Bitcoin. That's why we love Litecoin. And that's why we are going to the Litecoin Summit. If you guys are interested, please make sure you use that link in the live chat as well as the description for Litecoin Summit, $84 a ticket over here in July 24th to the 25th in Nashville, Tennessee. That was a nice segue for a Litecoin promo. But still, it's the truth. Litecoin's the longest running blockchain with no downtime. It's actually able to scale, and it, do, it does what we need it to do. Period. Oh, what's up, Tave? Welcome. James Kellogg is new to the chat. Good morning, James, and welcome to the chat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this fine freaking morning. All right, <laughs> Mike said light corn. Yeah, light corn. It's a beautiful corn. Everybody loves light corn. Bitcoin's $54,420. Oof, how zesty, how zesty. Uh, Johnny, they never learn, unfortunately, no. Um, because listen, a lot of people were upset because Litecoin isn't like a million dollars, which is fine, but it works. And it's the only thing that really works the way you need it to work. Um, so that's all I'm saying. And it's very underrated and people will end up going into the Litecoin direction when Bitcoin fees are too high and Ethereum fees are too high. Where are they going to go? They're going to go to Litecoin. They're going to go to Doge, period. Um, period. And even Digibyte too, which Digibyte had a great weekend as well. We're going to get into the market recap in just a few minutes, but it, we also have a nice example of a blockchain game I played over the weekend, Shrapnel. And it appears that Shrapnel had some issue poos because they're apparently having a perma ban on users that are trying to game their system. They had their STX over the weekend um, and there were numerous users trying to gain an unfair advantage in the 
matches and warns of a permanent ban against all forms of manipulation and includes sharing login credentials, giving access to in-game characters, items, or progress to others, or using another person's account, which again is very, very reasonable. So I support that. I support that. So shout out to Shrapnel, by the way, because their game was freaking fire over the weekend. And shout out to Crimson for playing with me. He did kill me in the game, he said. So um, I was a little I was a little sad about that. But Crimson has my back in real life. So he's not he's not going to do anything or else his wife and his girlfriend might hurt him. But it's OK. Um, but shout out to Crimson. Uh, it was great playing Shrapnel with the boys, with the boys over the weekend. I was like... <laughs> It's so funny. I'm like a bunch of like with all the gaming bros. I had I <laughs> I went out um with the fam. We got some Thai food the other night on Saturday and it was so fire. Um and I came back, I had the carton of noodles next to me playing shrapnel. I felt like such a gamer. I was like, ah, oh, let's get it. Um I was full raging, it's true. I was full raging. Um I'm not gonna lie about that. And they listen, they didn't see it, so it's okay. If I live stream one day, then you guys will see the gamer rage. Uh thank you for the team bracelet, Ronel. Shout out to you, Ronel. Uh when smart contracts on Litecoin, they have OmniLite if you want to look into that. There's a lot of people minting on there, and then uh you have uh, the inscriptions as well. There's millions of inscriptions. But Ronel, I would suggest you hop into my Discord and my Telegram because there are people that are working on Litecoin in, in there and uh, people will people will explain things to you. We're going to go into the market recap really quick. As you can see, we have a sea of green. Some red bubbles too. I see flare blue with Adam too. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Bitcoin. Bitcoin is pumping right now. Oh, pump it up. You got to pump it up. Pamp it. Freaking pamp it up oh, one more time. You got to pump it up. Are, did we manifest 53K on the show? I'm just saying, guys. I was like, I hope we hit 53K on the show. I hope we're manifesting it. Um, because as we're hitting $52,727, our high for the day, we're running. Oh, poop. We're running, running, running with it. We also have people that are saying that Bitcoin could have a correction to 48K. In my opinion, we don't know for sure. We don't have a crystal freaking ball. But here's what we got. This is what we do know, is that we have this little bit of a re previous resistance here at 48.5. So if that's my bear scenario, we've been calling that for a long time. We've been talking about it for a long time. Kevin, thank you for the hands hearts. Where have you been, Kevin? Where have you been? Uh, but then we also have, again, 48.5. Our neutral is 51.8. Apologies. And then our bullish is 56K. That's our bullish scenario. Kevin, you're crazy. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, but again, we have 52000 around $700 right now. 1.85% in the green. We have a nice, beautiful, look at that glow of the green dot just freshly printed today. Look at this. Look at this. Nick from Market Cypher, my little traders in the chat, please give me your lovely opinions on what you feel about Bitcoin this morning. Will we hit 53K today? Put a what or a yes emoji. Or do you think we are going to plummet to 48K? Put a two. So one and a yes emoji for 53K or two and a no for 48K Bitcoin. So we're hovering around 52.7. Let's take a look at the weekly chart because we just started a new week. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, we closed right at our 51.8 resistance for the week. We're now opening in the green. Seems like we're again for the past two weeks ish hovering around this 51.8 level. Opening this week, we're still looking at levels. Again, this 51.8 is extremely relevant on the weekly since we had a lot of wick highs here back here in December of 2021, but we failed to really maintain that. And on the weekly, that really brought us down to that 37.7. Now I'm looking to conquer it this week, close above 51.8. And hopefully we go back to 56K because even on the weekly, it makes sense because we kind of found our footing around 56K before having that wick high on the weekly to 64 eight and then we retraced and then we pumped back up on the weekly but yeah that's my main thing 56k i would love to see how bitcoin reacts to it this time around we've had a really nice build here uh you could see here from december to february we had a really nice consolidation here on the weekly and we just took off we had a really nice breakout so this is what happens when you consolidate so could we consolidate for another few weeks or test that 56k which could possibly lead us to 60 
based on previous zest. Now on the weekly, we do have a green dot that was printed here at the beginning of February that's pushing that momentum up. Green money flow, pamping, the highest money flow we've had since November of 2021. And again, November of 2021 was right here where we were hitting all time highs and then starting to cool off. So this is a very interesting time to be in crypto, to be in Bitcoin, because who's to say that maybe the four-year cycle does not hold up, and I say it a lot, that you have to be prepared for the bullish and bearish case scenario. I said that at 15K Bitcoin, that you have to be prepared that if this is the bottom, and people told me I was crazy. I was on Around the Blockchain. I was on all these other shows. You could go back and watch them. I said, what if this is the bottom and 15K is it, so you have to be prepared for if it goes below 15 or if it goes back to 20 and beyond and melt faces. People said I was crazy. And then what happened? We consolidated. It was the bottom. We pumped up through 20K and then brought us to 30, consolidated more around here, 40K, moving up to where we are now. Now it comes into the same thing where is this the top for right now? Is this the local top? Are we going to maybe go back to 48K or are we going to retrace? Who knows? Are we going to consolidate all the way until April, until the halving? You don't know. Or do we hit all-time high before the halving? You don't know. So I would keep all options open, bullish and bearish case scenario. Don't listen to everybody that's telling you you're guaranteed to not have all-time highs before the halving because they don't. no one knows nothing. Okay, we've only had, what, three or four four-year cycles already? Like, please, it's not enough data. And there weren't a lot of people in this space yet. This time is different. Everyone thinks this time could be different, but you never know when it will be, is my point. So please be careful. Stop listening to everybody. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I listened to this trader, and I listened to do to do Listen to yourself, please. Listen to yourself. Be prepared for anything. Because more importantly, it's not about Bitcoin price. Sorry, fam. It's not about the price. It's about having money that belongs to you so that if your bank shuts down tomorrow, you have money. That if they decide to censor you because they don't like you or your opinions, you have money that belongs to you. Censorship resistant. All these beautiful things that we rely on and we trust because of Bitcoin's trustless nature. It's the irony of the whole thing. We trust that it's trustless. That's my little rant. We're hovering around 52.5. Let's go to freaking Ethereum. Pampin' Ethereum. Ethereum's up. having a freaking time right now. Outperforming Bitcoin. Yesterday I closed at 3,100. We're still around the, where we opened. We're at $3,117.36. cents. 0.13% in the green. Yesterday, this was yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday we had a green top printed. Momentum slightly spiking. We got that VWAP that we were hoping would go over the zero line, which she did, which is awesome. And then we also have the RSI that's cooked right now. She is baked. She is overbaked. Uh, so she is definitely having to cool off soon because, again, incoming downtrend is possible uh, with an overbought RSI, like I said. So could she cool off or could she keep going? I don't know. This is really the one of the highest RSIs that we've seen since really March of 2022 and even before that in 2021, November of 2021. We're seeing a lot of synergies where we had those all-time highs in the past. We've had a really nice run with ETH. Could she find her balance again at 27.75? I wouldn't doubt it. But could she keep running to this magical, I'm feeling a zest here, with $3,233, it's a random freaking number. Well, not really random based on my previous, uh, you know, history here. But that's really what I'm watching for. 3233, guys. We saw 2340 was a magical freaking number. Look what happened. I don't know. Could 3233 be that magical number that pushes us to eighth all-time highs again? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm freaking feeling spicy. I'm feeling spicy. We're going to go over to the weekly, see how ETH is doing there. <clears throat> so ETH on the weekly, again, very strong consolidation um, in the past year from like April of 2023 to November. And we pushed up very nicely. Uh, again, this is, was the highest weekly close we've had since this week of April 11th in 2022. Absolutely beautiful, blissful, what we want to see, what we want to feel. And again, 3233 is the next stop on the weekly. 
since again when we established the support there we had a really nice pump to 39.90 about we retraced and when we lost our footing here that was that detriment on the weekly that brought us down to 11.30 ethereum and eventually like it was really triple digits that week with the wick low we do have a green dot that's still playing out here on the weekly VWAP spiking downward, which doesn't give me the best of the zest, along with that flat RSI. She is overbought on the weekly. Last time she was overbought was February of 2021. And that is when we were kind of cooling off right here. We tried to retest over 3,500 Ethereum, and that's where we were cooked. That's where we were cooked. So that's what I really got there. So again, Levels to watch, 27.75 and 32.33 for ETH. Let's go to Litecoin, the freaking right coin. Everybody loves Litecoin. Woohoo, 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 woohoo. $70.86, uh, 1% in the green. Like I said, Litecoin Summit, please check it out. $84 a ticket, Nashville, Tennessee, July 24th to the 25th. We have the 200-day SMA where right here on Saturday, PAM! From the 200-day SMA at $68.67, about where it's sitting at now, $270.39. Absolutely beautiful, what I want to see. I want to keep closing above it for about a week to feel bright and bushy-tailed. I do have a green dot that's pulling up that momentum, beautiful. Sideways VWAP is over the zero line, which I enjoy witnessing. Although the green money flow is dwindling, so I'm wondering where the bulls are at here. RSI breaking through that neutral point, going bullish, which is beautiful. Love to see it. Um, so I'm majorly looking for $75.50 and, again, $62 Litecoin if we have a miserable day with Bitcoin and things just take a fat poop and flush. <laughs> Let's take a look at Dogecoin. Dogecoin is at a critical level. Critical. Let's get physical, physical, do, 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 physical, physical. All right, so we have 0.086 cents that we were looking at. We're tapping it. We're hanging there. Eight cents is the bearish. 0.086 is the neutral. And then the bullish is nine and a half cents because I keep saying that's my warm and fuzzy level here with Dogecoin. Green dot freshly printed yesterday, pulling the momentum slightly upwards. VWAP isn't beautiful. I've got to say that for a fact. And the money flow is slightly nearing the green. So if it goes to the green, the crypto faces would say, Lowney, baby. But again, you don't know for sure. You don't know for sure what she's going to go into the green. Let's get digital, digital. That guy's nice swash. I like that. It is nice. <laughs> Three diglets, Doge. No one buys that. Who says that? Look at the on chain analytics, bro. Doge is moving on the blockchain. Move in. Because she's moving for bruising. Um, I don't know why this super chat is taking like a bazillion years, Three Diggies, but I'm going to do your XRP for you. Thank you for the super chat. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm going to do Digibyte after, Jay. Remind me. Remind me. I'm going to do Digibyte right after XRP for Diggy. XRP is 54 cents today. Again, really couldn't hang on to this 55 that we were watching here and rejected the 200-day SMA. So 48 cents is still in play. Still in play. Neutrally, you want to close at 54 and three-quarter cents. And then bullish, you want to pass that 200-day SMA and target 64. But it seems as though you're not getting the best of the zest here. Red money flow going deeper into the red. VWAP down. Christmas tree action, but not in the best way. Recently printed red dot that pulled that momentum down. So I would be very cautious, Diggy. But again, those are the same levels we're watching for a million years. I have done every day waiting for you. Oh, yeah, let me do Digi by you. Digi, d -d 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 Digi. Digi is over a freaking penny, guys, and I am so excited. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Oh, Digibyte makes me so excited. I freaking love Digi uh, because it's probably one of the most underrated crypto currencies in the freaking game um, besides Litecoin. I think Litecoin and Digibyte are probably the most underrated cryptocurrencies you'll ever witness in your life. Um, and it's just the amount of zest that they possess and the amount of fundamental power that they have is just so beautiful and i don't think a lot of people embrace it to be honest and it's it's sad but it is what it is we're going to embrace it on this channel 
finally getting some price action. We're over a penny, 0.01302 cents, 1.8% in the green. So we have the green money flow finally coming through, which is nice, really nice curvature on that money flow. Sideways VWAP, but we are over that zero line. Greens up, push that momentum up. The RSI, freaking woohoo! What a surge. This was the highest RSI we've seen since around here, March of 2022. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, levels to watch. 0 0.01230 based on previous rejection right here and previous support levels. Uh, we had a really nice run, so I would look at that, but also look at where she started as well. Uh, found some footing at a penny, and that was where, obviously, the psychological level kicked in, as I wrote here, pant. Um, <clears throat> so, again, 0 0.01230. And then we have right here 0 0.01478. I would look at, again, based on previous uh, wick highs, but also the rejection here as well. So it's going to be a pretty tough resistance. So that's what I would watch, and hopefully we get over to those previous levels that we saw here. Uh, what's going on in the chat? What's going on in the chat? <laughs> Digital Fortress, proof of work is better, but you like to spread the risk. Do whatever you need to do, man. Um, wow, did you be 25 sat? Yeah, did you buy just cheap right now? Very cheap. Um, let's see, Meninja, hello, Days Fintech Channel, JBZ, nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Three diggy, look at XRP go. You're funny, dude. Uh, let's see. Digibike, I did. Uh, XRP, I did. Hmm. I got you, Majestic. No problem. Rocky B, hello. Uh, Caspa mining is fire. I know Caspa hit the all time high, so I wonder what the miners are thinking if they're just going to dump now. Um, Sup, Andrew F. Hi, nice to see you, Andrew F. All right, so let's do like one more. Let's do one more. What's what's it gonna be? Um, all right, I think I have Adam here on my chart. Let's do Adam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have Adam. AKA Cosmos. Let me just expand that out. All right, beautiful. So we're at $10.88, around 5% in the green. We have that green dot that is just printed, pulling that momentum up. VWAP is looking good. RSI is looking good. Some nice curvature with this money flow. Hopefully that goes over that zero line there. So what I'm watching is bearishly $10 in a cent or just $10 flat because really that's a psychological level. And then we have $10.61 cents like I'm watching. Again, I would like to establish the support here. And then bullish, look at $12.39. That's what I feel. That's what, that's what we're looking at still. Um, I saw Matic in the chat. We're at $1.04 for Matic. Uh, let me just expand these lines out a little bit. The levels are remaining the same. Where we had right here, uh, just failed to establish support here, really, like a, like a dollar, a dollar one. Um, so I would look at that because, again, it's a psychological level. And then pushing that dollar ten, especially because we've got a gr nice green dot that's just printed, view ops going. And we have some nice things happening here uh, with Matic, the Polygon. Shout out to all my Matic fanatics in the chat. My Matic fanatics. Um, Digi, I'm still holding Digibyte in the same wallet from 2018. You know, like all these, like, you know how they like talk about like Bitcoin whale wallets and, and ETH whale wallets from like so many years ago. It's going to be like the same thing with like Digibyte and Litecoin. Just watch, dude. Um, Ronell, Solana, please. Yeah, for Ronell, I'll do one more. All right, hold on. Uh, still the same levels. We're at $103, so we're still struggling with the 104 Um do, 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 do. $103.68, 0.2% in the green. We would like to get more curve on that uh, money flow, bring her back to the green. Um, VWAP is pushing up. Just that red dot is destroying us right now. Also, the RSI is not too strong. So again, I would be looking at that $104 still, um, bearish 94, and then bullish defeat that 117, 120 resistance. Also, uh, shout out to Alex O'Crypto. I don't know if he's in the chat, but he's going to be like a dad and stuff. Um, so shout out to him for like becoming a dad and things. Uh, but yeah, 
really great uh, time to be alive, man. And I do have a video I'm going to upload today of um, Prime XBT. So make sure, again, you guys, uh, make sure you like and share that out when, when I get there and when I post it today. And then I'm also going to post uh, the Fox Business interview. So make sure you guys are watching out for that as well. Uh, we're going to see what happens with Bitcoin. We're lingering around 52.7. We'll see if we hit 53K today. It would be beautiful if we did. But either way, we're going to keep calm, hog along, and stay zesty. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. I hope you guys have an amazing, an amazing, an amazing, an amazing, amazing, amazing Monday. Um, I hope you guys kick the week off with love, zest, and power. We all have power. We have beautiful power that we possess, and people really don't know it. So thank you guys so much. Again, if you haven't yet, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share this stream out with friends so more people know what's going on with Bitcoin and crypto. Again, have an amazing day, a happy Monday. And as always, 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 stay zesty. Peace.